Hello, today's problem is the genotype of F1 individuals in tetrahybrid cross is heterozygous for four genes. Assuming uh, independent assortment of these four genes, what are the probabilities that F2 offspring would have the following genotypes? And here is a list of genotypes. If you know how to solve this problem, I recommend you to stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own, and when you would be ready, you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. For those of you who don't know how to solve this problem, just follow my explanation. So, uh, here we have uh, F1 generation genotype and in order to get F2 uh, generation we have to cross this genotype with itself because this is only one genotype of F1 generation. So we have to self-pollinate if it is a plant, for example. So um, we have to cross um, heterozygous one individual for, that is heterozygous for the uh, gene A, heterozygous for the gene B, heterozygous for the gene C, and heterozygous for the gene D with um, so this can be parent one with uh, another one that is also going to be the same genotype. So this is going to be um, parent two. And when we cross uh, these two parents, uh, as long as we know that uh, these genes um, assorted independently so each gene here represent with two alleles because organism are deployed and has two alleles that can be um, homozygous dominant heterozygous and homozygous recessive so three different variants uh, but here in uh, f1 generation uh, we see only one genotype for all the parents but uh, when we cross them, uh, different genotypes are possible. So how to predict? And this is very easy. So for example, for the uh, we have to consider each allelic pair separately. So for example, capital A and small a genotype when we cross with the same um, genotype for parent two. So here can be parent 1 and here can be parent 2. So when we build the Punnett square, as you see, we can predict uh, frequencies of the genotypes possible. And um, for example, here uh, we have small a, small a, and according to this uh, Punnett square, we see that the frequency is one quarter. So we can uh, say that frequency for the uh, capital, or oh, sorry, small a, small a could be one quarter. And as for the uh, crossing of the, uh, once again, parent one here, parent two here, and if we cross two uh, genotypes that is capital B, small b, with capital B, small b, the same. Uh, results can be seen here and the same frequencies and for the small b small b chances also going to be one quarter so we have to put one quarter here and as for the uh, small c small c and this is going to be the same probability. So we have for the parent one uh, capital C small c and parent two capital C small c also. And the same probabilities can be predicted. So this is going to be capital C capital C here, capital C small c here capital C, small c here, and small c, small c here. And 
we are going to get one quarter chances uh, for the um, genotype to be small c small c in f2 generation and for the as for the small d small d probability uh, this is going to be so parent 1 and parent 2 genotypes small d capital D small d and capital D small d here so our example as you see is very easy uh, all the genotypes uh, going to be uh, the same frequency is going to be the same for each allelic pair so um, once again chance is going to be one quarter and now we can uh, find the probability of this genotype just multiplying all the numbers and this is going to be 1 over 256 and now it's very easy to solve for the rest so probability for the uh, variant 2 to be heterozygous for the uh, gene A according to our Punnett square the chances would be 2 out of 4 or 1 half so we can put 1 half here as for the uh, to be uh, heterozygous for the gene B once again chances would be 1 half so we can put 1 half here and heterozygous for the gene C uh, chances would be also 1 half and the same chances would be for the uh, gene D so 1 half and when we multiply all these numbers we are going to get uh, 1 quarter here multiplied by 1 half 1 uh, eighth and multiplied by 1 half this is going to be uh, 1 over 16 so now we can solve next example so for the uh, genotype to be capital A capital A chances as you see would be one quarter so we can put uh, one quarter here for the B uh, B for the genotype to be homozygous dominant uh, chances also one quarter and for the C gene C to be homozygous uh, dominant uh, chances also would be one quarter so one quarter here and as for the D to be homozygous dominant uh, also one quarter so when we multiply all these numbers we are going to get the same uh, answer as in example one so one over 256 now let's move to the example 4 and uh, this is going to be 1 out of 2 chances for the uh, gene A to be heterozygous so 1 half uh, 1 quarter to be homozygous dominant for the gene B so this is going to be 1 uh, quarter and 1 quarter for the um, gene C to be homozygous recessive and one half chances for the gene D to be um, heterozygous so once again we have to multiply all these probabilities and what we are going to get here would be one eighth here multiplied by one quarter would be um, 1 uh, over 32 and multiplied by 1 half would be 1 over 64 and the last example would be uh, 1 half chances for the gene 
A to be heterozygous and uh, one quarter chances for the gene B to be uh, homozygous dominant and one quarter chances for the gene C to be uh, homozygous dominant and one quarter chances for the uh, gene D to be homozygous uh, recessive and here we are going to get uh, one half multiplied by one quarter one uh, eighth multiplied by one quarter uh, one thirty two and multiplied by one quarter uh, would be one over one hundred twenty eight so here is a uh, four answers so four uh, probabilities for each genotype and uh, this example was very easy because each um, uh, gene was present in heterozygous form in both parents but you may get uh, different uh, parents with different genotypes for example parent 2 can be homozygous dominant for the uh, gene A and uh, homozygous recessive for example for the gene B so in this case uh, you just have to build a Punnett square for each uh, allelic pair and in our example we can build only one uh, Punnett square in order to solve this problem but I show you all four uh, Punnett squares for each uh, allelic pair separately so uh, you would understand better how to solve this problem later if you would have uh, different genotypes for parent 1 and parent 2 you just have to build Punnett square for each allelic pair and this is how you solve such problem as you see this is very easy thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have any and see you in the next video. Goodbye.